Hey guys, I'm Dev, and I personally think a hero is only as good as their villain. Spider-Man has always been defined by his rivalries with masterminds like Green Goblin and Doc Ock, but I can kind of see why there hasn't been a lot of talk about the villains in Homecoming. The Vulture and his gang aren't exactly on the same level as the Joker or Magneto, but the movie is putting a cool new twist on Spidey's street level bad guys. Let me tell you about the villains of Spider-Man Homecoming and what makes them cool. The world's changing, boys. Time we change too. Bird costume aficionado Michael Keaton plays Adrian Toomes, aka the Vulture. In the movie, he runs a salvage crew that scrounges up advanced technology left behind in superhero battles. When Tony Stark's new company, Damage Control, squeezes them out of business, Toomes goes on a crime spree in a flying suit made of Chitauri technology. So why'd they pick him for Spidey's first MCU movie? Well, he's kind of been on deck for a while. The Vulture was a long time coming. He was the second supervillain Spidey ever faced, way back in 1963. Toomes has been in a ton of video games and nearly every Spider-Man cartoon, including the original 60s show where he's called Vulture Man. I control the sky. Run, you fools, run! But he's never been in a movie, even though he came super close during the Sam Raimi era. He was going to be the main antagonist in Spider-Man 3, and he was even going to be played by Ben Kingsley. But Sony insisted Raimi use Venom, so Vulture was pushed back to Spider-Man 4. John Malkovich was cast as Tombs, and there were rumors that Anne Hathaway could have been his daughter. But there was still bad blood between Raimi and Sony, so the movie never happened and we got the not-so-amazing reboot instead. So why did Raimi want to use the Vulture over the much more recognizable Venom? Well, it might be because he's a grandfather, at least in the comics. Tombs is a grumpy old man and is probably his most defining character trait. Neogenics is my hope for the future. And of course, your legacy. Don't rush me to the grave so soon. Norman Osborn is making that mistake. He even de-aged himself for a while, but it didn't stick. <laughs> Imagine if your grandpa turned off Fox News to go put on flying green pajamas to go rob banks. And like your grandpa, he's got his loving family for motivation. At one point, he was stealing to fund medical treatment for his terminally ill grandson. And his daughter, Valeria, is an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. But the life of crime is rough on this old timer. One time he had a massive stroke and begged Spider-Man to smother him with a pillow. There aren't too many supervillains who are card carrying members of the Sinister Six and the AARP, but you don't want to drop your guard around the Vulture because there's a lot of fight in this old dog thanks to his wings. Without his suit, Adrian Toomes is as useful in a fight as Larry David. But inside his electromagnetic harness, he's the most dangerous old man at Denny's. He invented it himself, but his business partner screwed him out of the profits. It generates particles called anti-gravitons that lift him off the ground. With his razor-sharp wings, he can fly up to 95 miles per hour at an altitude of 11,000 feet. And the anti-gravitons come with an extra bonus. Toomes has superhuman strength and durability inside his harness. They take a while to wear off too, so even without the suit, the Vulture can still put the hurt on Spidey. Given that Homecoming's Vulture is a scavenger like his namesake, it makes sense that the suit in the movie is more like Iron Man's armor. The rest of the gang has that cobbled together look too, like the second villain, the Shocker. His name is Herman Schultz, and I'm shocked it took him this long to get into a movie. This is the costume. He's been reliable cannon father for Spider-Man since 1967. I always thought he'd be a great first act villain for Spidey, like a James Bond style opening credits warm up before we tackle the real bad guy. I don't know if he could handle his own movie, but I like Shocker's role as the professional. Herman Schultz was a career criminal who invented his vibro shock gauntlets as a quicker way to crack safes. This is why they call me the Shocker. Unlike a lot of comic book rogues, the Shocker isn't driven by insanity or revenge. He doesn't have anything against Spider-Man personally. The Shocker is a professional, like Robert De Niro and Heat. Guy told me one time, don't let yourself get attached to anything you are not willing to walk out on in 30 seconds flat if you feel the heat around a corner. That's the discipline. Where's the profit in swapping brains with your nemesis and destroying his life? Does throwing his girlfriend off a bridge get you any closer to retirement? Hell no. Shaka would rather be a well-paid muscle for the kingpin. And bring them to me. Bring me the keys to our future ownership of the world. Or threatening to black out NYC for a reasonable ransom of $1 million, which is like, it's like 8 million people here. It's like less than a buck, right? To Shocker, all that matters is the score, the getaway, and that dream house in Hoboken. And like any career criminal, he knows his limitations. Schultz has been portrayed as a coward, a sad sack with a crippling lack of confidence. I think my career has just hit a new low. Ah, uh, who cares what you think? And yeah, he's not afraid to run like hell when a job goes bust, but he's just keeping his eye on the prize and playing it safe. That's why he wears his quilted yellow suit. He doesn't walk around like that because he enjoys looking like a couch. Hey, Shocker, you look different somehow. 
Have you been reupholstered? Shocker's gauntlets can shatter concrete, and that heavy padding is the only thing keeping his flesh from vibrating off his bones. I can't really justify that color scheme though. The last weird thing about the Shocker and Homecoming is that there might be more than one. From what we've seen, different people in Vulture's crew are using Shocker's tech. The gauntlets look like modified versions of Crossbone's jackhammer gloves from Civil War. Now, apparently Bokeem Woodbine is playing Schultz. He was awesome as a super professional gangster in Fargo, so he'd be perfect for the Shocker. See, you wouldn't by any chance be Mike Milligan in the Kitchen Brothers, would you? You make us sound like a prog rock band. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Mike Milligan and the Kitchen Brothers. Double whoops. The whole gang gets their weapons from the last villain we know about, the terrible Tinkerer. His name is Phineas Mason, and he's great because he helps the Marvel Universe make sense. There are so many comic book bad guys who create crazy advanced battle suits just to mug old ladies. Alright, why are all these brilliant inventors knocking over bodegas? Can't they just ask Tony Stark for a job, or at least put some fillers out to Tesla? That's where the Tinkerer comes in. He's a shadowy weapons dealer who builds all their gear. He helped create Mysterio's suit, the Scorpion's tail, Grim Reaper's scythe, you name it. It's characters like the Tinker and Melvin Potter from Daredevil that keep the Marvel Universe grounded. Not everyone can be a genius engineer like Stiltman. It makes a little more sense that there's one mad scientist hooking everybody up with animal themed weapons of mass destruction. Plus, it works within the MCU too. All the Avengers do is fight off alien invasions and robot apocalypses, so of course there'd be a ton of crazy technology left over. Naturally, you'd expect someone to tinker. It's a great plot device to streamline origin stories and get some lesser known characters on screen. Like, we don't even know who Donald Glover's playing. We could be halfway to a Sinister Six by the time this movie's over. And why not? Spidey's got such a great rogues gallery. They're not the most intimidating bunch, but you can still tell compelling stories about them. Check out the superior foes of Spider-Man if you went in awesome in-depth dive with a shocker and his C-list villain friends. Look, I think we all know Homecoming isn't about the bad guys, but there's one rule that's constant in every great superhero story. A hero is only as good as their villain. Hey guys, I'm Dev and welcome to the new Now This Nerd channel. If you're as excited for Homecoming as I am, please hit that subscribe button because we have two more Spidey videos coming this week. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in those videos.